Minds on Muscle community, welcome to the Fitness Pro Mentors interview series. If you want to hear some amazing interviews from amazing fitness professionals all over the world, please join our Fitness Pro Mentors private Facebook group. But today, let's make it rain. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Brandon. It's, it's, uh, I'm really excited, and I know we've been chatting a lot online, and I'm excited to do it. Let's just get right into it, man. Um, I, I, I know that you're doing wonderful things in the fitness industry, and I think everyone should aspire to do things like this to give back to the industry and share and collaborate with others. So congratulations on all your success. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. And I would say the same to you because honestly, people like you inspire me to continue to push. And I see you creating an incredible environment, creating a culture and a team. It's so much more than just you and Mark. It really is this team that you've built and you're in business that has really is really changing the industry, especially where you are um, in Miami, which is just fantastic. I got one question I want to ask you. We're starting right off. I know the common thread that we have is um, is how we met Mr. Peter. And I actually, I hate to say this, mm -hmm. he spoke a lot about you and your work ethic. I actually don't know. How did you come to meet Peter and find the RTS program? That's a great question. So um, I came down to Miami and threw myself all in to training after my sports career. And I went to work at a corporate wellness facility, but I was also working a significant amount of time at a performance facility called Bomberito Performance. And Pete Bomberito, who, you know, is certainly a mentor in, in my strength and conditioning uh, education. He, he's a very knowledgeable, super smart guy, very hard worker, I have a great deal of respect for him. You know, he told everyone, you have to go to the uh, RTS course. And I went to the RTS course and Kika Mila, do you know Kika Mila? I do, yeah. Yeah, Kika Mila, who I think the world of, her and her husband. So um, they told me to go to the course as well. So I went to the course and I'm sitting in the course. It's myself. I'm sitting right in the side of Pete. And, you know, I have this teacher and the teacher is short super jet, super strong. And he, he was probably one of the first teachers. I mean, I've had maybe five teachers in my life who left a significant impact on me. And I'll tell you the story super quick. So I'm sitting in the class, it's day one. And we go over like, we're going over anatomy basically. And, and Peter's getting into it. He's super smart and knows so much about the body. And we go up, it's like a two or three hour block, no break, no nothing. And then we break, I'm sitting in the back of the room. He walks over to me and he says, hey, are you okay? And I said, not really. And he says, why? And I said, because I, I feel like I know nothing and I feel like I should not be sitting in this course. And he says, well, you came here to learn, didn't you? And I said, yes, I did. And he says, well, you shouldn't feel overwhelmed. The fact that you feel overwhelmed and care enough to want to learn speaks volumes. And I said, but Peter, I, I don't know any of this stuff and I have so much to learn. He goes, we all do. We all have a lot to learn. But it was so massively overwhelming. And in that moment, he said, you know, you're, what we do is we try to learn as much as possible because we make educated guesses. That's what we do. We, we believe we're guessing right. And for the most part, when you have a great, you know, a vast uh, base of knowledge, you're probably pretty darn close in, in doing things that are helping and positive. He said, but you can't give up. And it, that doesn't mean just because it's overwhelming, it doesn't mean that it's not for you. He said, everyone in this class one day will do great things in the industry if you're not already doing great things. So you just need to become really great at your craft. And that helped me so much because most teachers want to they want to want you to know what they know and they could care less if you learn and peter wanted me to learn and he was a constant resource for me until he passed uh, unfortunately and i remember having dinner with him in miami and he i mean he helped me so much with so many things and, I, and by the way outside of rts biomechanics levers outside of that he helped me with life and he was just the perspective that he had was so special. And every time someone asks me about RTS, I say, I don't really know any instructors. 
and I say, I, and I always go into this long story about Peter, and I said, I wish you could have this guy for an instructor because he was such a great teacher. And, and by the way, Ren, I know you know this, but for the listeners, he wasn't like cocky or braggadocious. He was comedic. He was he had humility, and he made you feel like you weren't stupid, if you will. I hate saying it like that, but most teachers make you feel like you're garbage. And he wanted to help you rise up. And I thought that was really special. I really did. So that's my Peter story. I love it. He did have like, like he's this like five, eight, five, nine gigantic muscular. He has the stereotype of the potential mean bodybuilder that could really make you not feel good about yourself. And then at the same time would want to make you have a big hug with him because he was just so warm. And he could also tell the worst, most terrible jokes that no one else should tell, but still make you laugh with his big, infectious, boisterous laugh. It's uh, an right. incredible right. fellow. I'm glad that you got to have him because he's just he was just an amazing human. Well, Brandon, even still today, I'd say, what would Peter do? And if I'm, you know, I'm taking a, a client through a movement, I'm thinking either A, I'm not coaching this well, or B, I wonder what Peter would think of this. Like that still goes through my mind. That's real. I love that. It's great. You know, so uh, you know, it's that's, super impactful. So, you know, God rest his soul. We miss him. Certainly miss him. And that's why, I mean, that picture I showed you on the Instagram story that we have that in our reception. Every time someone comes in, they go, who's that guy? He goes, he's the reason why we're here, which is just amazing. Yeah. So I'm amazed. Amazing, yeah. Mark. Um, so, I mean, I got a, a couple questions. I'd love to dig in with you. I mean, you are all the way from Fall Let's River go. to Chief Body Architect at Anatomy. And so what I'd love to ask you, but as I know that you have an extensive sports career, but once you finished that, you went on to becoming a trainer and, and quite a fitness professional. And I'd love to learn a little bit about how that transition was from you, from going from sports yeah. to getting into helping other people um, as a personal trainer. <sighs> Great question. Uh, I certainly answered this a few times in my life. I, I was playing sports and I played football for 26 years through youth football, high school, college, NFL, and CFL. And when it came to an end, I injured my back very badly. And my back was so ripped apart and I was in so much pain that I, I had trouble walking for a month. I was in a hospital for weeks and I basically, knowing nothing about the body rehab myself back doing mobility drills and this is like let's say this is 2006 i mean i'm rehab i'm I'm researching i'm doing things i'm reading things online and i i had the help of the physical therapist where i was their time was limited because they had to work with the people who were still playing so I was in a pool every day for two hours. I was doing mobility. I couldn't swim yet because, you know, being an extension when you're swimming, it wasn't exactly good for your back. I was doing like mobility drills to just forgiving on my body because I was only dealing with a lower percentage of body weight. I would spend time doing, you know, calisthenics like body weight, mobility, just leg circles, things of that nature. And I, I, I got to a really dark place because I moved every day. I played professional sports. I did well, people knew who I was, and there's a bit of an ego thing there, but it made me feel really good. Now, no one cared about me, right? My family certainly did, but people, you know, I'm gone, you, I'm gone, I'm no longer playing. Uh, I can't train to get those great endorphins, so I wasn't feeling good about myself. I went down a dark hole, and I got really depressed, and there's a lot of things that happened there, but one day, I remember watching a video, and it was a video by, I think it was Eric Thomas, and I was like, oh man, this is like, this guy's talking to me. It helped me so much, it inspired me. So every day I would wake up and I would do this thing on Facebook where I would post like a positive quote. And that was, that was the initiation. But that was, that was, that was to help. But that, more specifically, that was to help me. So from there, that was kind of like how I would start every day. And then I started to do all the rehab things. But I spent like four, five, six hours in the gym. Because what I was trying to do was I was trying to recreate my athletic day. And my athletic day was wake up in the morning, 
go to the training room, do my mobility, lift weights, run, practice, films. It's like an eight to nine, 10 hour day. Mm-hmm. So when I'm trying to recreate that with rehab in my body bag. So I said, I have to change everything I'm doing. So I would start with some sort of positive affirmations, posting, mobility, training. And then I realized it hit me. I have to help people feel better about themselves, the way they move, mental health, wellness. And that's why I started training. It's amazing, Mark. And it's, I, it's interesting. I mean, I've, I've heard some really interesting stories and I love that. That's like from the ashes of your injury, you continued to learn more and took the passion that you had for training and really turned it into something where you could help more people, help them get more out of their body and their life. Mm-hmm. That's just, just fantastic. Now, is that where you transferred? Yeah, that, was the into- that, that was, that was, I'm sorry. That was the intention. Like, because obviously the most fulfilling thing in the world is helping others. Right. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I cut you off. Yeah. So is that how you found yourself sliding over to Equinox and getting in there and getting involved? So I was training myself at Equinox. I was a member and I was training some people on the outside and the training manager walked over to me and said, you know, you should work here. And, you know, I, I realized like as a professional athlete, you have to be selfish with your time to train. But when you're a trainer, you have to be selfless. So everything was about me. And I realized that the only way to get true fulfillment is like helping other people. And that hit me like a punch between the eyes. And once I started to do that, I, I saw, you know, a multitude of changes. That's brilliant. Now with Equinox and, and you working there, I know in your book, you talk about how you treated Equinox, even though it wasn't your own, you treat it like it was your own and you invested all your time, even to bending over and picking up the tiniest piece of paper on the ground, to try and keep that place clean and put all your time into it. From yeah. that experience, when was it that you decided, Hey, I want to be a trainer. I want to help people to blending over to, I want to open like one of the world's most premier future of fitness style facilities. Like when did that journey happen from one-on-one all the way to one to open a place? Well, I think that's a great question. And, and I, I'm, 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 I really want to share this part because I think this piece gets lost. Firstly, when I started working at Equinox, I was a horrible trainer with no foundation. Um, It helped me tremendously uh, when I went there because they had in-house education. They had a great established brand. And and the the facility was the nicest gym I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, it was beautiful. And I was completely in love with having the ability to work there or getting the opportunity to work there, getting the luxury of using the gym. Like that was, I grew up in crack gyms, dungeons, the 45 pound, the 45 pound plates weighed 43 and a half pounds. Like it was, sometimes they had dumbbells, sometimes they didn't, I'm not kidding. Like it, I grew I went to a boys club gym growing up and it was, it was, a, I loved it, but Equinox was like 30,000 square feet and it had everything. And I know a lot of legendary trainers that started off there. So kudos to them, but mm-hmm. I'll tell you when I went to work there, it was by far harder than anything I had ever done. And I tell everyone this. And then later on, I'll tell you what, starting the business was the hardest thing I'd ever done. So when I was working, I would train my first person at 5.30 a.m. And once I got busy, I mean, I trained people for free for months until I got busy. I mean, completely for free. And I, I wasn't upset about it, but I was panicked because I wanted to be successful. And I wasn't exactly printing money with anything. I hadn't made good money in a long time. I was more or less broke. And once I started working, I had a trainer tell me the other day that they did eight sessions in a row. And that was a long day. I mean, for years, I did 10, 12, 15 sessions a day. And I'm not suggesting that they were amazing sessions, but I did the very best I could. And those were long days. And I did that from 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 to 2014. Wow. 
So, I mean, that, and I, for, I, for the first, I mean, there were, for the, I maybe up to the first five years, six years, I didn't take one vacation. Not one. Because I, I want, I was so obsessed with trying to be good and trying to build a positive reputation for myself. So I'll tell you, Brandon, the irony is that entire time, people on the outside, friends, maybe some family, not really family because they didn't know, but friends, people around Miami, clients told me, you got to leave here because you're better than this. And it's ironic because they thought I was something that I wasn't. I wasn't there yet. I was there trying to figure out how to be a great fitness professional, trainer, be a pro, and be consistent. And so we formed a, a group of people that were really close, a really close training crew that went from like one of the worst locations in the country to the number one location in the country winning the award is like top, top, top club. So, I mean, that was really, really special to do there and, you, and knowing that you're competing with the New York clubs and the LA clubs. But my, my, my point, Brandon, was that even though everyone told me I should leave, the irony is that the longer I stayed, the more experiences I had under my belt, the more equipped I, I was to go into the next thing. I always say the problem now we have is People starting off in the industry, they just want to go, I want to be a manager. I want to do this. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I just think that they're not prepared to do that. Like they think they are. And that doesn't mean that they won't be unbelievable one day. It's just that there's a difference between someone going from one brand to another brand. The job doesn't work out for whatever reason. They get paid good money. Then they go to another brand. They get paid good money. Then they go to another brand. They get paid good money. And the whole, or, or, or they get paid, period. The point is, they didn't do anything to advance that brand, to grow the brand. Like if you're there a year, a year and a half, that's, that's amazing. But there's something special about commitment and figuring things out. I'm not talking about building up a client roster and training people. I'm talking about understanding the flow of the gym. I'm not talking about when people come into the gym, who comes in the gym, why, what moves the needle, paying attention to statistics, paying attention to numbers, paying attention to why budget was off, paying attention to like what people truly connect with. Those are things that it takes years and years to understand. Now, if you're a highly organized person and you go to a brand and you do well, okay, you did well at one thing, but you have to have a broad and diverse portfolio to understand what moves the needle in a business. And I, I'm certainly no pro at it, but what I was telling you before, Brandon, was because I spent so much time in that facility, I was there from 5 a.m. to 9 o'clock at night Yeah. for the first seven, eight years. So I saw everything, how people check in, what their energy is like when they leave, if they follow through on training sessions, who's stealing from the club because they're training people late at night after eight o'clock because there's no manager there. You know, I, all those things, you know, like those are all skill sets that I brought in here. And I would, I only knew because I experienced it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, I'm trying to get people or when I spoke this past weekend in Seattle at Luca's event to understand that you're not losing because you're putting in time to build a foundation, to learn from other people. Like that's, that's not a loss. Right. Like one of, one of the instruct, one of the speakers said, Martin Rooney, he said, you know, he, he's so sick of people like putting their feet up in the sand saying they're printing money and, Look at me, look at my life. It's unbelievable. He said, if that's what you want to do, there's nothing wrong with that. But that's not what we're doing. Like our our mission is to be in front of people and help people. If you don't want to be around people, 
you're in the wrong industry, right? So if you're like, man, I need an exit strategy as soon as I show up, like that's, I don't know. We're not talking the same language, you know? And I'm not saying like people have responsibilities. They have family, they have kids. They want to spend more time with their kids. Of course they do. I respect that. But what we do in fitness and changing lives and becoming a part of the fabric of people's everyday life, that's time and that's an investment and that's a commitment. So if you're not in it to understand what that is, you're either going to be really unhappy or really unsuccessful. Mark, I mean, that last thing you just said, like there's so much wisdom and so much you just said in that last point. So anyone who's listening to this in the future, please rewind that. But Mark, I would like to ask you, like on that point, in your opinion, you know, it's difficult because in personal training land and having a career here, it's extremely difficult because you have a weekend certification. Maybe you find a certification that has a few weekends. You take that and then you see someone who's in shape that looks sort of like you, is well-spoken sort of like you, but you haven't <laughs> gone through the belts, so to speak, in the martial arts to get up to the point where you can... You haven't learned enough about people. You haven't learned enough about business practices and learned enough about exercise. It's difficult. I, I don't know, and I'd love to know your thoughts. When someone enters the industry, in your opinion, in the best case scenario, whether it's orthodox or not, what do you think would be the best ascension plan for someone to start off and have a career, end up in a place where they're having a career truly helping people and also being fulfilled? Well, I think there's... there's, there's uh... It's like a scale, right? And, and the scale I talk about is you have to have the knowledge of, of the mechanics of, of actual training and, and programming and understanding the body. And look, there, as we both know, Brandon, there are people who understand the body inside out and backwards and are unbelievable. And I spend time around them going, I don't know how this person is that smart mm -hmm. because I'm not that smart. But there are certain things I know, like there's certain systems I know, there's the way I was trained by Pete, the things I've learned over the years with my body, with their body, with breathing, with mechanics, with energy systems. But that's one side of it. So the, the other side and the majority of the issues or challenges I see with young fitness professionals or people starting in the businesses, it's either a communication issue and they have a difficult time paying attention and listening to clients because clients will tell you exactly what they need and what they're looking for. And now you know exactly what they need. So you can give them this, the, ther the, the therapeutic uh, training or the recovery or the uh, not fix them, but give them what, what, what's essential for them. But they're also going to tell you what they need. And if you ignore that, you're either, I say you're either very immature or the next part, which is your ego is telling you that it's all about you. So, you know, I, I think you, it's important to understand why are you there? Like, why are you there? Like the, the ego is such a big part of our industry now. It's, it's super tough, you know, like you, Figuring out how to pay attention to someone. And one of my mentors would say, people don't pay you for training. Now, bear with me. Of course they pay you for training. I understand that. But what they truly pay you for is to pay attention to them. That's a huge part of it. And I'm not saying just pay attention to them, training doesn't matter. Of course it matters. It's huge. But focus on them. I'll give you an example. We have clients at our facility and they get stretched. Now, do they want stretching sessions? Yeah, they want stretching. Why do they want stretching sessions? It's the same person. The same type of individual gets stretched. I'm talking the same age, same gender, same everything. Why? They're looking for some sort of fill, which is care, which is nurture, which is just someone paying attention to them. Now, there's a science to it, but if you're really paying attention to behavioral and patterns, they're looking to get a bucket filled that's not necessarily being filled. That's a huge part of it. So you have to 
go deep down the rabbit hole with science and understanding all the things we discussed previously. But then you have to go deep down the hole with behavior and understanding the best trainers, the best pros in any, any field are the best communicators. And the best communicators are the best listeners. Which in turn, I believe, and I agree with you so much, turns into organically this organic culture, this organic community where everyone, if you and all the other staff are listening and paying attention and really putting 100% undivided attention into the person right in front of you, truly becomes this culture. And I don't know, I don't want to put words in your mouth because I'd love to hear more about this for you, but it, cre it creates an organic culture that is just hard to recreate unless other people are doing that. I know one of the things that you regarded um, is just culture is everything. I see it all over your content and I absolutely love that. Um, when you think of that as it relates to your professionals and your own experience, is that what you're thinking of with the listening and the paying attention? Yeah, uh, of course. I mean, look, we're, we're I'll, I'll tell you the, first of all, we, we try very hard at anatomy. We work very hard. And uh, I believe the entire team, every single person that we have on that team is extremely considerate and caring. But it wasn't always like that. It wasn't always like that. We had people that, you know, I, I talked about being selfish and selfless. We had people that were very selfish. And they believed like, you know, this is the way I am. And I'm not changing. And I realized that that was my fault because I enabled them. And I was a, I did a terrible job as a leader and I started to look around and pay attention to the energy and what was going on there. And then once we trimmed the trees and we realized that paying attention to others, caring about people, that was super important, but there's another side to that. Um, quickly, I'll tell you, we used to have one of our core values and the core value used to be treat others as you wish to be treated. That's no longer a core value. It's treat people with respect because that core value, treat people as you wish to be treated, meant I'm going to treat you the way I would like to be treated. But that's not about you, Brandon. That's about me. Oh, I see. You have to treat, pe treat people the way they want to be treated. And if you're focused on yourself, you'll have no idea how they want to be treated. So... The most important person we say at anatomy is not you it's the person standing in front of you so that in itself has created our culture and our culture simply is the way we do things but more specifically what it means is just be a good person just be a good person and we've had people that you know have you know i don't have the luxury of doing everything that Mark would want to do. You hear this all the time. Hey, I just want to be me. I just want to do me. I just want to be myself. I don't want anyone telling me what to do. Well, if you lack awareness and judgment, we might have to tell you what to do, right? Because we're never, ever, ever going to let one person be bigger than the team. It doesn't work that way, you know, and we're not going to let one person jeopardize the integrity and the reputation of the team. So the culture means, or is the team is first. The team is the most important. Our staff, our body architects, our front desk, they're not front desk, they're called energy experts. Our maintenance team is not the maintenance team, it's detail agents. You know, the our sales team are the gatekeepers. They're really, they're all special people and they're all extremely important. And one person's job is not more important than the other person's job. We have great respect for everyone's role and responsibility. But then that trickles down through the members. The members are extremely important. And the team knows that we're going to put them first because we choose to put them first and be caring and care about their experience. Um, but being considerate, integrity, uh, being a person who has knowledge, um, they're dependable, they have initiative, enthusiasm, uh, endurance within the job, loyalty, judgment, awareness. Those are all key things to be a part of the culture. And we have the, the values right in the wall. You know, be honest, do your best, uh, serve others, treat everyone with respect, 
and work with passion. So um, we, whenever we get lost, we just refer to the core values. And it's, it's brilliant, Mark. I mean, your marketing and everything, it showcases those words over and over again. And I, I think those mantras are very powerful. Uh, Mark, I got two more questions for you because I know how much, how much uh, I value your time. And um, uh, the big thing I wanted to ask you, which you kind of led into at that last point there was, I mean, you, you've really done a great job with giving your team, like coming up with amazing words to describe different parts of your culture and having everyone be a part of that team. Um, as you opened anatomy and have transferred into this role of becoming a leader, um, what a lot of our students and fitness pro mentors that are a part of this program are at this point where they're scaling and starting to hire teammates. And we try to tell them like to try to build a team as a leader. What kind of things have you learned that a future gym owner like yourself could learn from? Um, when you're building a team, uh, I'll tell you, you know, one of the key things is figuring out, um, number one, it sounds rhetorical and funny, but who do you want on your team? You say, Mark, I want someone who's hardworking, who's honest. No, no. Think about exactly the type of person you want. You know, what you want their roots to be like, what you want their work ethic to be like, what you want their commitment to level to be like. Now, if you, if I ask you if you're committed, you're going to tell me, yes, I'm committed. I'm a committed person to anything I do. And then I'd say on a scale of one to 10, how committed are you? 10 being very committed, one being not really committed. You'd say, I'm a 10. Some people say I'm a 12. I say, great. Now the most important question is, please explain what commitment means to you. Because my definition of commitment and yours is very different. That you could say, you know what? My level of commitment, I'm gonna show up at 9 a.m. I'm gonna do a couple sessions. I'm not really gonna participate in team activities. And then I'm gonna go home, but I'm committed. That doesn't work for us. That's not what we mean by commitment. Commitment to us means you're going to show up early. We tell you exactly when you show up. We have a team huddle at 8 a.m. every morning. You're going to be there at 7.59. You're going to be there 15 minutes prior to your first session of the day. You're not just going to walk right in and train. You're going to prepare. You're going to get involved in in-house and out-house team activities. You're going to be an unbelievably uplifting energetic and enthusiastic teammate and you're going to serve others. That's what commitment looks like to us. Now, somebody said, that's a lot for me. I said, I know it is a lot and it is a big commitment. That's why I asked you the commitment question. That's awesome. I love that. That's a great question. I, I just wrote it down because we have business meetings each week with our staff here at Strata and I have never asked a question like that, but that is such a great question. We're lucky we have a committed team, but That'll be a fun question to ask in the interview. Have you ever asked that question when you're talking to a prospective trainer or had whoever conducts the interviews and had that question be the, you get an answer and you're like, you know, this relationship isn't going to work for us. Oh yeah. Really? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, it's to be quite honest, it's this, I would say five questions through the interview process. It's getting to know the person and we have like a three stage process. So we actually spend a lot of time. We're actually very slow to hire. Um, we just want to make sure the person, it's not about the person being a great fit for anatomy. We want to make sure we're a great fit for you. We don't want someone to be here who's miserable and who doesn't have a positive experience. Yeah. I brought people in here and I want to do this so important to me. And then six months, a year in or eight months in, they go, it's not for me. It's not what I thought it was. That's fine. That happens. That, that's real. Anatomy is not perfect. We do the best we can. Uh, I've committed my life to this. My business partners have committed their lives to it. They've worked very hard and we're trying to do something special. We don't have like, we didn't start this to have an exit strategy. We did this because we want to help people and we want to grow it, we want to grow it in a positive way. And we want to help more people. That's what we want to do. And we, I just met with one of my business partners for three hours sitting in down. What, what are our, our, our important things to do this year? Like, what are we going to attack? Um, so, you know, what, what I was going to say, Brandon, to your question, we have five questions and all the other questions matter, but they kind of don't matter. We're just prepping to get to those other questions and the answers to those questions don't necessarily matter how they're answered, meaning the energy, 
how long it takes them to answer, um, what they say specifically, what they share, what they don't share. Those are the key drivers of the questions. So I had a guy come in once, he said, you know, first of all, he walked in, he had sunglasses on, and he said, man, I love anatomy, I heard so much about it, it's an incredible place, this place is like the Mecca. I said, it's so, it's so great to meet you. We sat down, no resume, didn't take his sunglasses off, and he said that, you know, he, was, he, he, he told me he would strongly consider making anatomy his home. But he also works in LA and New York and he could bounce in and out of anatomy every once in a while. So I didn't need to I didn't need to ask him about commitment because I'm sure he was a good kid. It just wasn't the right fit for us. But we're we've, you know, the ex experience that we had, it brings clarity and we have an understanding of who we're looking for here, what type of person. Because don't forget that person's gonna be an ambassador for an anatomy. And how they conduct themselves in public, how they, they how they represent the brand, that's a big deal to us. Now, if they don't care about that, that's that's a problem. You know, we, we should all care. They don't have to care like Mark, but they need to care. So they need to be mindful of what they do inside and outside. That's super important. I love that you have that slow to hire strategy because I, I do believe like when you're on the we have a trainer on the floor they are such a pillar energetically their energy their words they have a radius around them that everyone hears them and so they need to be sure. present they need to be a part of the team so to speak because they are representing i mean they may not have to work as hard as mark but they are representing you and the company right right and i and listen we i you, what you said is so, so important. They, they're a representative, but I love, love the diversity the anatomy team has, where they come from, you know, everything they have, the way they handle themselves, uh, what they like, what they don't like, the kind of music they listen to, like everything, the diversity we have is so unique and special. That makes us who we are. Right. Mm -hmm. they, I don't expect anyone to be like the next person. And I don't. The only thing I want them to have in common is a caring heart and their care for others. That's it. That's it. You know, um, you said energy. The energy is super important. Like it, it, it matters. It matters how you affect other people. It really matters. Now, on the last question, I'd love to ask you, I mean, speaking about all of that, you have done an incredible job in a very short period of time of having anatomy become from a marketing and advertising perspective, at least on outside view, because I'm in Canada and I've never been to anatomy. It looks like you've done a remarkable job of branding, presenting and showcasing this culture. I mean, everything you do that I see, which is what really like made me feel comfortable to reach out to you uh, in your position is it doesn't seem like, although you have pictures of you from your past and you exercising and training, you're showcasing your hard work, but equally, if not more so, you're showcasing others. You're showcasing your clients. You're showcasing your other trainers. And it's really inspiring that it's, you know, standing on the shoulders of giants is one thing. Uh, you're constantly putting people up above you, it seems like, trying to give them a platform, elevate them, have them be seen. If you had one piece of marketing advice that you would share to a trainer who's trying to reach the level that you're at, trying to help more people and trying to be out there, um, what philosophy or core values do you have around something like that? I would say, you know, it always goes back to the question, Brendan, um, what's important to you? You know, someone says, I want to be a fitness star. And I say, okay, why? It's fine. If you, whatever you want, you, you don't have to justify it to me. This is a drill for you. Ask yourself why you want that. Well, because I want people to pay attention to me. I want people to respect me. I, listen, I only wanted to play football. So people would pay attention to me and respect me. It wasn't about football, right? So I would ask, start off by asking, what's important to you? You know, why, why do you want to be a star? And maybe we find our way to, if you're going to have a, a business and a team, I'll tell you, first of all, all that marketing, you know, 
the brand stuff. Um, yes, I'm a part of that, and I'm on a team of people. Like I can't take any credit for that. That's you know my part of David, and it's you know Chris, and, and I'll tell you, uh, Leah does an amazing job in marketing. Like we have some really, really like they're awesome. I love talking to them. So I'm like, wow, I didn't know that. And they're just really savvy and smart. Like I like to say we collaborate. Like we certainly ask each other, you know, get input, but you know they 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 control a lot of that stuff, and they're smart. You know what? So you let smart people do what smart people do, you know, and I don't let them. That's what they do, you know. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, I'd also say early on in my life in, in, in anatomy, don't forget, I, I came from being a very shy kid. So it was super important for me to prove myself and show people that I could do this and look at me. But that went through like 20s and 30s and even my early 40s. I'm 45 now. The like last few years, I realized that, you know what's really cool, Brandon? When you figure out what other people want and you get really excited about what they want, you get really excited about showcasing them and showing them, I'm going to show everyone like how cool this person is and how hard this person works. And no one knows that that woman was in that room folding towels for the last four hours. And I don't care if I get likes. I care if people know that she's working her ass off. And guess what? The work that she does that nobody sees and we know it's a thankless job, she needs to get some praise. That's a big part of it. Now, no one wants to do it because it's probably not that cool or popular, but I, I, I didn't get here by doing the most popular things. I'll tell you that. So I could care less. I love that. I, I, I resonate. I, Mark, I, I have to say, I appreciate all of your wisdom and your time with everything that you've shared. I mean, uh, reading your book and listening to other shows you've done, you have so much wisdom and I encourage anyone, if you haven't heard of Mark, please look up other content, uh, check out the kid from fall river, uh, check out your book, um, dream big, never quit. I was nervous. I was going to forget that. I mean, everything, I yeah. mean, you got to check out everything you've done. Um, Mark, what's yeah, next for you? Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, look, um, the, by the way, the documentary is just the kid from fall river and that's by Randy West from Monarch, Monarch productions. He did an amazing job. Check out the documentary if you like inspirational pieces. He crushed it in it. Not because I'm in it, but because this guy is super talented. Uh, and that was made for at-risk youth to help kids. Nice. You know, middle school, high school, college to help show kids that, you know, can go out there and do something. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be very challenging. You can do it. Uh, well, what's next for me is, you know, do my part in helping anatomy grow and do the very best I can. Um, I have you know, partners in this business and I don't want to let them down. I want to do a great job and we have amazing team members here and I want to make sure I do a great job by them. Like, like, like they, they, they're here for a reason, you know, that's cool. Thanks. So that's, that's what's next. And is, you know, there's, there's a lot of really cool and positive things going on here. And I think that we have a opportunity to do something really special. So I don't want to let anyone down. And I said it, I wrote it this morning. I think I, I really want to do a great job. You know, I want to do a great job. And I remember there's a, there's a, there's a scene in one of my favorite movies and the younger guy is talking to the older guy and the older guy asks the younger guy he says, what are you so concerned about? And I always say the same thing. The line in the movie is I just want to do it right. And there, there are many days I'm not so sure what that is, but I just want to do this right. And I haven't figured that out yet, but I think I'll know it when I, when I get there, you know? And even if you don't, man, I know one thing for sure of you from everything I've heard that you've shared today is you're going to keep trying and you're going to figure it out. So thank you for doing that. I mean, the fact that you are so hardworking and you push yourself and you're pushing yourself to the brink every single day outside of your success. I mean, that's truly inspirational, your work ethic. So Mark, thank you so much, oh, man. I appreciate, I appreciate it. That. Thank you for having me on. Uh, it means the world to me. I know that you're doing extraordinary things and, and pushing fitness and wellness professionals forward. So kudos to you. That's a really special thing. So thank you. Please check out anatomy, uh, at anatomy on Instagram and, uh, 
where we're going to do some great things in fitness. Follow us. Good. Definitely follow him. Mark, thank you so much, man. Have a wonderful day. All right. Thank you so much, Brian. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.